G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. We are here on the brand new map in ranked forts. This is quickly becoming my favorite map. And we're about to witness the juicy legacy take on the Order of the Dragon. The big question is going to be, have the nerfs been enough to the juicy legacy? Well, we're about to find out, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to introduce, in the west corner of the map, playing the Order of the Dragon, in the color orange, it's Corvinus 1. And on the east side of the map, in the color red, playing the Juicy Legacy. It's Crackity here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Forts. It's a pleasure to have your company today. If you're enjoying this content, make sure you hit that like button. It really helps out with the traction of the video. Now let's get to it. We have got ourselves an absolutely beautiful map. Have a look at this towards the north. You have got absolute 100%. Well, I say 100%. It's not really 100%, but 100% concentration of the gold up towards the north. So if there's any side you want to be fighting over, it's that northern side. There is a large gold vein down towards the south. So I reckon that even if you lost that top side, you'd still be in with a chance. But we'll have to see how it plays out. Now, Corvidus 1, known for his fast imperial strategies, is on a classic, a certified fast imperial civilization. The Order of the Dragon recently receiving a whole bunch of buffs, uh, none of which are particularly, like, th there's nothing insane in there, right? Like, realistically, the biggest one was a, a couple of percentage points to their villagers, which I read on Reddit, which is what you do on Reddit, uh, that it, do it does actually make a difference. So we'll have to wait and see how that plays out for him. On the other side of the map, though, Crackity, He's received a number of nerfs on this civilization, the Juicy Legacy. Uh, most notably, we have seen a massive nerf to the Meditation Gardens, but we'll find out whether it's still going to be good. Uh, realistically, he doesn't have that many good spots to drop it down, other than probably the base is the best spot. I think right here, as long as you can hit the gold and then the stone and then some of the berries, I think that's probably going to be about as, be as, as good as you could ask for, because realistically, your resources are all within the range of your town center. So naturally, it feels like putting that Meditation Gardens down Probably, yeah, you probably want it on this side of the TC just to get a little bit closer to the stone. Uh, at least that, that's my thinking, but I guess you could probably put it on this side as well, just as long as you're outside of the, the uh, or you're inside the radius. But no, he is going to go down to the south. So curious that he has made that decision. But we'll have to see exactly how it plays out. Mine work going to be coming out on the back side of the base for Corvidus. Definitely the right call. When it comes to this map, you don't have a lot of space in the base. So throwing down the mine work, you know, right next to the town center over here just doesn't feel good. And besides, it's always nice to have the landmark in the back of the base. Makes it a little bit safer uh, in the event that your opponent looks to try and take you out with some sort of landmark snipe. Then just having this a little bit further away can help you out, especially when you're up against aggressive players like Crackity here. Crackity, of course, is a, a notoriously aggressive player. Now, before we get any further into it, we're at the three-minute mark. I thought I'd just clarify something that I said in uh, not my most recent video, but in the previous one. Um, I, I was talking about, and I, I don't want to ruin the mood for this one, but I was, I was talking about how I recently went back to my hometown, and I referenced that my pop had passed away. I just want to clarify, okay? I call my grandpa pop. My dad, he's still healthy. He's still alive. So don't worry. You're still going to hear his voice in plenty more videos to come. I just want to say that. And I do thank you all for your well wishes. Uh, and I'm not going to think anything less of them because you thought it was my dad. And hopefully you don't think anything less of uh, <laughs> of uh, my situation because it was was my grandpa. Uh, I was I was very close to my grandpa. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, my, my parents, I mean, a bit probably, you know, my wife would say, Drongo, you're oversharing here. My parents got divorced when I was very young. And my fondest memories were with my father. Uh, I, I'd get to spend every second weekend with him out of the entire time you know that I was alive you know my mum I'd be with her and I'd be dreading it the entire time there for like 12 days and then I get to go spend two days with dad and that was the best fun of my life and uh nan and pop they used to take me out every single weekend I'd get to spend with dad so I spent a lot of time with with pop talking um and uh you know on, on the Friday nights and uh he'd, he'd, they'd come over and, and pick me up on on the uh, on the Sunday evenings as well uh to take me back to my mum's house so I got I was very fortunate I could spend a lot of time with him have a lot of great memories a lot of funny memories I tell you what there was a uh, that was a fun eulogy that I got to do it was uh I, I say fun I mean obviously you know you, you try and look on the bright side but anyway Jungo, that's enough let's get into it all right okay we're here anyway uh, let's check in with Crackity and see how he's doing, because it looks like we're going to have ourselves an archery range coming out here. One thing to note, no Song Dynasty just yet at this stage. Also not going to be looking for a second town center. Now, keep in mind, he's up against Order of the Dragon, who will be going for that second TC. Now, there was an argument that I made, and essentially it goes like this. If there is any civilization you want to be going 2TC with, just from an objective perspective, because of their villages, it's actually the Order of the Dragon. The Order of the Dragon are incredible when it comes to 2TCs, and that's because their villages are faster, better, stronger, harder, I think is the, the fourth one there. Let me explain. 
You can only put 15 villagers in this, TC. You can only put seven in this one. But the villagers, the seven villagers inside this town center are harder, faster, bigger, stronger than what your opponent can put in. So naturally, it makes sense because now you've got tankier villagers that can survive more shots than what any other civilization can have. So you've got that little bit of a safety net, not to mention other safety nets like emergency repairs, as an example, is a very nice safety net. Uh, but I guess one thing to note, though, is every time you do lose a villager, you're losing 1.2... I don't think, think it's 1.25. I think it's 1.28 villagers, isn't it? It's a, it's a little bit weird. But we have got ourselves quite the all-in looking to come out here from Crackity here. Now, realistically, he doesn't have a lot going for him other than just making lots of Zhukunu. There's a couple of options or a couple of ways that you can play this uh, from the Order of the Dragon perspective. You can look to just go into Horsemen uh, early on, um, which definitely work quite well in this matchup because the Zhukunu a very strong unit, but the, the Gilded Horseman is particularly uh, adept at dealing with them. Uh, naturally, Crackity, when he sees that, will look to add in the barracks, and that's when it's going to get tough. So you can also make the decision to go into something like uh, Men at Arms, but the Men at Arms will be kited, especially because you can only really make one to a normal Holy Roman Empire player's two. But here we go. Six minutes into the game, Crackity throws down the first battering ram. Now, the one question I've got, is he going to be abusing battering ram hopping? This was something I actually went up against on my Smurf account, and I lost my mind when I played against it. I haven't in covered it intentionally, just because I didn't want to really, like, th throw the the cat out of the window. You, you got the genie out of the bottle. That, that's what I was looking for. I don't want to get the genie out of the bottle. But basically what you do... You put all the Jukunu inside the battering ram. You send the battering, battering ram to the town center. Now, when I did this, I, play, I faced a Juicy player. And what he would do is he would wait for me to shoot the battering ram. And when he did that, he would pop all his Jukunu out and then shoot my Jukunu. And then just naturally over time, he would get more and more and more. And it got to the point where I had to stop shooting his Jukunu. And I just kind of walked up to his battering ram and try and held it in there. And you can see there's the Jukunu out now getting popped. The villagers, you can see that they're, they're going to try and do a little bit of a stabby stabby here today. A couple of them do have their torches out. And you can see he actually gets the fade away from that. What is going on with this micro? I just realized the health of that battering ram. It is getting absolutely obliterated here. Vil's trying once again. It, what, it, what is going on? It looks like they're trying to melee attack, but I am seeing torches though. So I'm a little bit confused as to what's happening here, but I feel like Crackity might need to bring a villager forward just to repair this up. And I think... No, never mind. I thought that was that one was going to be it. It kind of looked like that one was making a mogul move over there. Uh, but we're going to have a second and a third battering ram now starting to come down for Crackity. And have a look at this. 20 military population against three. But the first of the horsemen are out. Now, this gilded horseman does have three armor. Not five armor. Not four armor. Three armor. Which means that you're up against a Jukunu. It's, it's only got the plus... Or it doesn't have plus one attack just yet. He's gonna he's just going to go straight for the battering ram. Look at that. He could have just actually killed that battering ram. That would have been a high value target right there. But hold on a minute. Is he just one-shotting these... Look at the damage he's doing to the Jukunu. The Jukunu is just going to get absolutely cleaned up right now. Crackity here in shambles. All of a sudden, a single horseman has ruined his day. Has rained upon his parade. And unfortunately, this little hideout towards the top side of the map has been found out. And, uh, and Corvinus is very happy with himself, I can be sure. Horseman looks like it might go down, though. He's outnumbered significantly at the moment. 15 to... Well, 15 to 1 now. 16 to 1. Scout about to go down as well. Next, Gilded Horseman is out. Keep in mind, Corvinus does sit on these two TCs. So naturally, his village account will continue to rise. He's also got stronger villages than Crackity here. So take that number and multiply it by 1.28, uh, I think is where it actually... Uh, sit. So around 40 villagers at the moment. So he's been training full time. Uh, we've now got the farms beginning to come down as well. Keep in mind there is no Arkham Chapel on the field. Uh, it is only just that mine work palace, which means over time, you're going to have a little bit of a fall off because you do lack that Arkham Chapel. But to be honest, where are you going to put it on a map like this? Like it's just, there's literally no spot. If there's ever been a candidate for a map not to make Arkham Chapel, it's this map right here. This is just one of the worst. But have a look at this. Corvin is now beginning to move out into the middle of the map, looking to intercept any reinforcements, but doesn't find anything. And that's kind of wild, right? Because normally you would see streaming units across the map, but he doesn't see a single thing. And so he's got to be scratching his head. He's got to be thinking, okay, is he going for like some kind of fake out? Maybe going to Castle Age? Is he throwing down a second TC? And then he sees the three battering rams and he's like, oh, okay. No, he is, he is going for it. Now, remember there is emergency repairs in play here. We'll have a look and see exactly how it plays out. We, we might switch it around to the other side just so that we can get a bit of a, a view here 
I want to I want to see exactly what is going on now. Keep in mind that emergency repairs will come through. There it is. Probably waited a little bit too early or a little bit too early for that. I think you could could have afforded to get it down a bit lower. Uh, all of these battering rams are quite high on health. Where are these units? The units are on the way back. There's the gilded archers getting getting absolutely obliterated by the Jukunu. And slowly but steadily, the health of the town center is being repaired, but that emergency repairs will eventually run out. Now those villagers underneath... Oh, you can barely even see them underneath the town center because we don't even have the... Uh, the, the What's it called? The... Um, the anim not the animations, the, uh, the shadows. I'm not sure exactly the best way to say it, but it looks like this town center will go down. Almost certainly, he's trying to repair it up on the backside. Two of the rams go down. Third one, looking to try and make it work. Villagers do get taken out. He's definitely lost a few in this battle. But Crackity here, looks like it might... He may have ran out of steam right at the finish line. Have a look at that. There is nothing worse than that. Quite literally, at the last second, everything just... Didn't, didn't pan out for, for the poor guy, unfortunately. Villagers, he lost three throughout that. So at the moment, you can definitely say that he's ahead because uh, realistically, Corvinus, as long... If he can maintain parity, then he is ahead on the villager count by point by 1.28. So that's that's pretty decent. Uh, and uh, I mean, at this stage, where does Crackity here go? It looks like it's just going to be doubling down. Uh, and this, I mean, there's a couple of options that you've got. I would have thought Castle would have been a decent option here, but realistically, his economy is not in a position to go Castle Age. If anything, his economy is in a position just to, well, to double down, and that's exactly what he's doing now. Keep in mind, he still is sitting on that uh, Yuan, Ming, Song, Tang, Tang Dynasty. Uh, so only the one landmark. We don't have a second landmark coming out, which means he's going to have to pay full price for things like farms, town centers, but it does also leave the... Uh, the, the cost reduction in for his castle age landmark. So that is something to consider. But now, Corvin is going to be adding in wheelbarrow behind this. He's got 600 gold in the bank. I think he might be looking at heading towards castle age. The one restricting factor is going to be uh, just the food. The food is going to be the big one. But have a look at this. The horseman numbers starting to build up here. The... Uh the Zhukunu are getting worn out, though. I'll say that much. You can you can see that they're, they're managing to take quite a bit of damage here. Just a couple of them with quite low health. But overall, it looks like Crackity will be able to strike a pretty decent blow to the defense of Corvinus. Now, is Corvinus going to be able to make it to Castle Age? It doesn't seem that way. I think Corvinus has realized very quickly that there is only a matter of time until the next round comes. And let's just put it this way. He doesn't want to be the one that has to pay because he is a cheapskate. And, uh, well, it's it's definitely, uh, it's it's Crackety. Oh, well, it's actually not Crackety's turn to pay. He paid the last round. Oof, this is, this is awkward. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll shout you guys both. Actually, you know what? I think Crackety's got this one covered. All right, Zhukunu number continuing to build. He's up to 35 Zhukunu. Keep in mind, he's on one base at this stage. Imperial officials spamming out these archery rangers. Have a look at this. Six seconds for each of these Zhukunu. So this is the equivalent of five archery rangers that are pumping out units right now onto this front line. That is ludicrous when you think about it. Five, the equivalent of five archery rangers here hasn't had to pay a dime over 300 wood for it. And, uh, well, the cost of the Imperial official and the uh, opportunity cost from not using the Imperial officials to gather taxes um, or supervise other areas. You know, there, there, are, there are other costs associated with it. But I guess you could also argue the flexibility of the Imperial official means that they're... Oh, God. Oh, Lord, he coming! Ladies and gentlemen... Pucker up. It is time. <laughs> it is time. Get him ready. The villagers are being... 13 minutes into this game, he's pulling villagers. Does he have anything left back at home? Not even a single villager being trained in the town center. Technically, he does have one villager here, but I suspect this villager is going to be very... Oh, look at this. Using the last 50 food and now bringing that villager. He was waiting for the hand in to come through. Manages to get it. He's pulling everything. Crackity here is striving for greatness. The walls are up for Corvinus. Let's take a look and see what he knows. A little bit of a little bit of movement down to the south. A couple of horsemen out of position. Village, villagers up to the north. So these guys won't be able to assist in the defense. But to be honest, he's got plenty of defense already as she goes here. Lack of outposts. But to be honest, you probably wouldn't expect them. Now underneath the town center, he's going to be looking for villagers. But you and I both know the truth. There is... Well, there's one villager that's here. And he's like, oh, I found you. Down you go. And then on the front line, he sees... Oh, Lord. Look at the amount of battering rams there are. Is there anything more scary than just seeing six battering rams in the fog of war being like... <sighs> this is not good. Oh, he's literally just clicked Castle Age. Oh, God. Oh, the landmark's towards the north, though. So things could could get good right now. This is actually a pretty decent, a pretty smart move here for him to do that. It's 11 villages, so it's going to take its time. And now he plays the defense. 
70, or sorry, 50 military population, 45 villages, but a lot of units here on the front. He brought the Imperial officials, leading the way, the Imperial officials towards the town center. He has brought the truck, he's brought the trailer. There is a sale on today. Emergency repairs, doing the right thing and using it immediately in this situation because there's so many units here. You want to make sure you get that maximum cooldown reduction on it for the next time that you might need it. But this town center is not long for this world. So how does he possibly win from this position? Manganel could be a play, but Crackety's probably good enough to split on it. So I think that you would be in trouble. Um, I would be thinking maybe Gilded Knights might be the best play. If you can get Gilded Knights. The problem that you're going to have is there are so many Zhukunu here, you do run the risk of being one shot. Uh, so I really don't know. But look at the villagers. He's trapped all the villagers. There's so many inside here. Unfortunately, didn't pop them out early. And they've all just fallen to their death. I think Crackety's managed to put Corvinus on the ropes here. He's a little bit scared. That's 22 workers taken down already, and he's back down to parity. 41 against 40 villagers here right now. That's one landmark. The second landmark has been spotted out. Plus two ranged armor going to be coming through. And leather. Look at this. Or oh, scale armor. Is that... Uh, well, I, I swear it was called scale leather armor or something like that, but maybe I'm just... Maybe I'm mistaken. Uh, you, you, I swear I remember it saying leather. Something like leather. Uh, but uh, that'll give him plus two, up to plus five ranged armor, which will actually be pretty decent. Uh, as long as he picks the fights early on, I mean, it, there's, there's just so many Jukunu. That's the problem, right? They're, they're guaranteed to deal three damage a pop. Uh, and there's a lot of units here. Crackety here going to be fighting for dear life. The question is going to be about whether this landmark gets discovered before Corvinus can reestablish an army. He's managed to get to Castle Age. He's done so, I would say so, I would say safely, uh, but I think that's probably um, incorrect. But he's managed to get there, right? He's stayed alive. He's got villagers out on the map. Now it's that last landmark. So this is where I feel like maybe even walls could start coming in a little bit more relevant just to try and delay your opponent. Towards the south side, it looks like the Zhukunu will get caught out. A couple of villagers here manages to trade out one for one. Won't be too happy with this, but does obviously now know about those villagers on the south. He's going to make moves towards the north side. Is there a scout out for Crackety? Does he know? In fact, he doesn't. He hasn't even spotted... Uh, he has technically spotted this part of the map. But he's going to be looking, and he sees the villagers down here. I suspect he, he could even look to move in that direction now. We're 17 minutes into this game. And it's definitely an option that it could, or that it could be down here. You know, maybe the landmark's down there. We'll see which way he goes. A lot of idols at the moment. Up to 28 military. 11 of which are just archers. Villagers moving towards the north. He could... Look to potentially throw down a, uh, a lumber camp. Maybe get these villagers just working very quickly for a little bit of extra wood. Maybe to throw an outpost down or something like that. But he's going to continue moving with intent towards that top side. Splitting up military around the map. Just looking to try and locate any kind of villagers that he can. Or any, any kind of uh, maybe buildings. And there we go. He spots out the mill. Now, of course, he would know about this because he's counted the deer. And speaking of... Speaking of deer, there was another pack over here, which has undoubtedly been spotted out. So he knows that there are villagers in the vicinity. Keep in mind, emergency repairs will not be in play. He could look for a Wallalol. We are talking about the Wallalol god right here. Villagers managed to spot the whole bit of army. And I think he, he knows at this point, he says, you know what? I think this is where it is. I think this is where it is. Needs to pull the relics for a Wallalol. We're entering into the cinematic mode. It is time, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for us to get down to business. The Gilded Knight is out, but look at it. Surrounded by villagers making the wrong decision and not going after those Zhukunu. The Zhukunu are the key here. But you, you say that until you realize the, the villagers have got a lot of siege damage. So maybe they're not. And now, kiting away, doing a pretty decent job. He's going to need to pull villagers if he wants to deal with these battering rams. The first of the Wallalols comes in. In fact, that's two of them. He's blown two at the same time. Manages to get a nice little hold on this position, but the last landmark has been located. He's going to pick up the third one. That third relic could technically be the one to do it. The archers are slowly but steadily going crackety here, holding on for dear life in this push. If he fails here, this is good game. And by the same token, if Corvinus does not win here, he will obviously bow out. And it looks almost certain like he's going to do it. He could be going for that third relic. That third relic in there hasn't been utilized. He needs to go it right now. If he doesn't, he's done. And unfortunately, I don't think he's going to realize. He's just going to be putting his head in his hands. And that's going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you go check him out. I'll leave links in the description to where you can go watch them live as that landmark does go down. I was a bit worried there. I'm like, hold on. Has he repaired another landmark somewhere? The landmark does go down. Whew, that was an absolute wild all-in that we get to see from Crackety here. A bit one-sided, but I tell you what, the defense right until the end definitely felt like it could have gone either way. Anyway, go check them out. Link in the description, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.